I keep doing the songs, if you know, I know the the desynced. Oh well. All right, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on the twenty eighth of November, twenty twenty two. I just realized there's not going to be that many more 2022s because uh, um, when you think about it, next week is the f uh, is going to be what the fifth of December, the fifth of December. Then there's the twelfth of December, and then the nineteenth of December, and on the Sunday after that, that's Christmas. So there's only four more weeks until Christmas, everyone. That's that's getting there, but. Uh, I hope you at home have had a wonderful Thanksgiving break, or if it wasn't Thanksgiving, um, I don't know when Hanukkah is, I don't know when Kwanzaa is, but if they are soon, enjoy celebrating those as well. Enjoy celebrating whatever. Um, I only know Thanksgiving because I've been focusing way too much on sales, and I was thoroughly impressed at what I could manage to get on the Friday. I was sorely disappointed what I could get on today, on Cyber Monday. This is where all like the, if you didn't get through the sales on, on Thanksgiving, this is where they would get, the, get through them, and all I ended up seeing was deals for Domino's pizzas. There wasn't anything there, so, uh, so how about let's hop into the game. Here we go. Sweet. Um, you might have liked that music that was playing in the intermission, that's because I've been playing more Pokemon Scarlet, and I have been really enjoying the music to it. They've, like, uh, Pokemon seems to consistently have one jam. I remember I set up my intermission music playlist before I even started streaming, um, regularly at the end of 2020. I just kind of set it up and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, like, you know, here's my list of cool jams. And, uh, I had, I had put, um... Great Pony Canyon music from Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon in there, um, which you, you you've probably heard. You, if you if you've gone through my whole like bit of intro kind of intermission music, you would know that song. Um, but then when I was listening to the Sword and Shield soundtrack, there was one of the caves, and that's got like such a jamming song as well. And I I was like, man, I've got to put that on the list. And now I'm playing Scarlet and Violet, and I'm like, man, you know, that's also got to go on the list. There's just so many good jams. So, I'm really enjoying that. The glitches, you get, you start getting through them. The game doesn't continue to come up with new ways to really be glitch exciting. But it does at least, you know, do the job. It, it still, it still is glitchy, but it's less in the way glitchy than you know, I would have expected. That being said, uh, there are still bits that are being discovered that are like, oh, why? Um, so I think the big one that people are finding out is that the, uh, the competitive is not, um, sorry, the, the, the multiplayer online is not, the RNG seed isn't randomly set, it's fixed, which means there are people just predicting, um, <laughs> like, when sheer cold, a one-hit KO move is gonna hit, and they just use it. And it's like, oh, that kind of ruins the fun of it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I have hopefully planned what needs to be done. So in particular, in my inventory, I have six keys, the Lotto Seal, the Sunstone, and the Pixie Flute. And I know there's hopefully enough space in my, uh, inventory for one more item, and that one item is gonna be very important. Um, I'm pretty sure if I stand here, I'm exiting, yeah. But visiting here is very important because this is something I actually hadn't gotten done. So here is the door. You can open this door with a key. You're going to Garen's tomb? His harp is set to summon beasts. I wouldn't go if I were you. When I was young, I traveled far south to the town of Domdora. The innkeeper treated me well. I wonder how he's doing. Oh, hi there. All right, take advantage of me. The world's gonna end anyway. I don't need to make any money. Oh, okay. What's this? The torch? I... Mm. The copper sword? No. Well, I'll take the money. The copper sword is not worth it, I guess. At this point. Look at that, you gotta burn another key to get this guy. Huh? You opened the door, did you? Oh, well, you take this key. Wow. That's amazing. 
<laughs> Use your keys wisely, bro. The tomb's entrance? I'm not a little bit to tell you that. If you must go, find it yourself. Uh, mm, I'm pretty sure it's like... Oh my gosh. It's somewhere in the town. There you go. That's such a cheeky, like, thing to find. Hi there. Nobody has ever returned from Garen's tomb alive. Go if you wish to die. Okay. And then, uh, here we are into the tomb. Uh, obviously, it's a dark cave, so... Better cast a bit of Radiant. And where are you going? Um... Oh gosh, where are we going? Uh... Cool. I'll just start wandering around. The enemies in here aren't the strongest that I've encountered, because I think actually the strongest enemies are the enemies around where uh, the golem is. The rest are not too bad, so I shouldn't have too hard a time in this cave. Um, in fact, I shouldn't really have too hard a time until pretty much we get to the um, to the end castle. But yeah, the plan for this stream is just. Let's beat the game, because we're almost there. I've been grabbing as well, like, throughout the game. Uh, you can see I've got the silver shield, that's the best shield. The Lodo's armor is the best armor. Um... So, uh, there's a sword, but the sword's in the last, uh... castle of the game. A life acorn, but there's no room. Well, let's get rid of the, uh... The torch. The torch is worthless, I don't need a torch, but the... The life acorn? You can always use a bit of extra health. And some money. And check in here, for some reason. And a, uh, an extra key is alright. <laughs> I don't think there's really anything else, like, on this floor. I think it's just... wandering around. But there's drolls, there's other kinds of things. Um... But yeah, this is kind of like an interesting dungeon, though. Just because, like, you know, you hear about it, and then, y you know, you return with your keys, and suddenly it's like, ooh, how mysterious is this? And you still need so many more keys. Like, at least keys are cheap, and you can just buy, like, a flat amount, and just kind of rock the rest of the game with them, and then just, like, top up every so often when you get the shot. Um, they're kind of annoying if you run out of keys, because you got to run to the one place where you can buy them without... Like, needing to get more. Uh, this dungeon keeps going on. There's a good meme as well with this floor. Where it's just nothing. <laughs> so that's good. Actually, I think it's a bunch of meme rooms as well. I think the enemies get tougher as you go along. Now, on this floor, I'm pretty sure you circle around the outside of the room. And I hope my view isn't shrinking, but... Yeah. No, this this game... I, there's not too much left, though. But... Definitely, I kind of want to go a bit, uh, retrospective on it. I know it's only stream three. Ooh. Ooh, this guy's, this guy's taking a hit. Um... But I think, yeah, the, the bits that I really love about this game is just how how raw it is. How just, it's an RPG in the sense of you go around, you hit things, you level up. And then, and then you get cool items and you just feel it. It feels so quick. It's so, you know, the progression is there. Everything just feels natural. The only thing really is that it's a bit, like, you know, mysterious in the sense of you wander around and you'll eventually find things. Uh, like, and honestly, yeah, in that case where it's like, you just have to know that, like, in this one town, there's that one area where you can use a key, and then you have to just, like, go into an invisible wall. And then you can go into the guy's tomb. But, the translation, everything's got a purpose. Everything's got something to tell you. So... Keep going over this way, I'm pretty sure we'll find- there we go, some stairs. And the stairs bring us back to, um, here, where I'm pretty sure we go south. There we go, killed the wolf. 
Also, I guess, what, uh, how much experience am I at? 17654. Uh, last stream, I embarrassed myself by uh, claiming that the experience curve was definitely not what it really was. Um, so, yeah, where are we going? We're going this way. Uh, there's plants. No, we're not going this way. Okay. This music's just, like, big and dramatic, though. Very, 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 very dramatic. Love it. I am too strong for this enemy. He does not want to deal with me anymore. There we go. Wandering through the cave more. Um, that's one thing that, like, I wish Pokemon had a bit more. Just random caves. The Eye Lord. Oh, I, I, I draw Lord. I draw Lord. Oh. This music is very just Game Boy, though, I'll tell you that. Or NES, I guess, if you really want to go that way. Um, but yeah, nah, I, I love it. I'd recommend it. I'd, I'd just like flat recommend it. I'd just be like, if you don't enjoy JRPGs, give it a try. And maybe you'll understand like why people like this. Although, I would probably say the better Dragon Quest game might be a later one. Um, maybe five. The Wolf Lord really doesn't want me to fight this, or to, to get this. Well, too bad, Wolf Lord. You're not, you're not having fun time. So there you go. So check it out. What's this? The shiny harp. There you go. Shiny harp. The guy's tomb as well. I don't think there's anything else really in here, so let's go outside. <laughs> All the way outside. So anyway, got the harp. Uh, and now the harp shall lead to salvation because you might remember very, very while ago. A very fair while ago. Defeat the Drackey. Uh, if I keep going, there should be... There should be a bridge somewhere? This is a while ago I've gone through this out, uh, this part of the map. There we go, the bridge. And, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go back to this one, like, room where there was this one guy who was just like, oh, You don't have the right item. You can't deal with me. I love the, the armor that's healing me as I walk along as well, because suddenly now it's just like, oh, now I'm back at full health. And the only magic I've used is, uh, using a couple of, uh, a couple of radiance in an outside, so. Uh, oh, not yet there. Uh, but yeah, so, um, so the Black Friday deals have all happened, uh, and, uh, we're pretty much in the lingering bits of anyone who didn't get through their inventory they wanted to get through. Um, but definitely people were competing over each other, stepping over each other. It was a bit chaotic. Uh, I managed to grab me, uh, some neat computer parts, but unfortunately, uh, I have completely forgotten that if everyone orders computer parts, Someone's gonna have to get them well after everyone else, and that is unfortunately me, so... Uh, my parts that I've ordered have not even left the warehouses, because I assume they're just going through so many orders. Uh, but one day, they'll get here, and I'll be like, cool. But until then... <laughs> well, still sticking with the old rig, but the old rig's doing alright. Uh, it's not even like the whole rig, I'm just kind of upgrading the processor. And then everything that goes with it. We've locked it in. We've properly locked it in, so... Um... My brain, like, almost wanted me to... To kind of go like, Oh, you should do a build stream. And I'm like, yeah, the problem with a build stream is that, one, you gotta be interesting. I'm not good at building computers. I'm gonna take my sweet time, and I'm gonna really hurt my back while doing it. Um... And then people are gonna yell at me because I'm, like, I'm gonna do it on carpet, because I don't have, like... Well, actually, I'm not gonna do it on carpet. I'm gonna do it on hard floor, but... Like, I don't have an electrostatic brace, it's just like, eh, just, just pop it in. So I go up to this guy now, so he finally found the shiny harp, Bundo 
I've waited a long time for a young man like you to arrive. Now, open that chest! What's this? The rain staff? So here we go, now, you get the rain staff. I think he takes the harp from you. Yeah, you don't need the harp anymore. So you get the rain staff. What would you like to say on the way out? Yeah, okay. If darkness stays enshrouding the world, the souls of people will soon turn as black as the darkness. That must never be allowed to happen. Go, Bundo. Go where rain and sun come together. That is a big clue. That is a real big clue. So, gotta do a bit of a fair walk. It's a spooky! Ah. Now, the nice thing about this game is that there's actually two objectives. I actually would like to know. The first objective was actually what was told at the beginning of the game. But it mostly only pertains to one guy. The other objective is kind of what you start guessing throughout the game. And that's one thing I love about the story of this game, is that for being super simple, just the way that it's presented to you, as minimal as it is, is like, hey, yeah, remind yourself, what are you actually doing? And that's the cool part, because now if I go into this cave, we've been in this cave ages, you know, many times, because it's what joins you. I just cast outside, whoops, I was going to cast, um, Radiant, and then I missed. Uh, the key thing is that if I cast Radiant, you'll notice that, yeah, there was a path to the right the whole time. I mean, there always was. But, and it's not too wide, but note this floor pattern. Ooh, okay. And if you keep wandering around, eventually, the Ida. Keep wandering around, and you'll notice, ooh, okay, that looks fancy. Use a key to open this door, and would you look at this? It's a sleeping dragon, who awakens when you go up to him. This is a, is a dragon. I'm pretty sure, have we fought dragons already? Like, as regular enemies? Is it, I thought, I, my brain was going, is this guy, like, and he's tougher than regular dragons? And the answer is maybe. He seems to be taking a bit of bit of damage, but I think he's got he's got a bit of health. I think this actually is a proper boss dragon. No, he's not. He's just just it, it took his time. You defeat him, and would you look at that? Oh! I thought no one would be able to come to my rescue. I'm Laura, Princess of Tantagil. If you hadn't arrived in time. It would have been made Draco Lord's wife. It scares me even now. Bundo, would you be so kind as to take me back to the castle? And you can say yes. And you pick her up in your arms. Oh, Bindo, hi. Thank you, blush. And it's real, like, minor. But you're just carrying her now. You constantly carry her. Unless you die. I think she pops back here if you do die. But legit... You can cast outside, and you'll just be like, whoosh. I'm outside, and you're just carrying the princess. Cast return to go all the way back to, you know, Tantagel Castle. I think in theory, you might be able to deliver her to Draco Lord. There might be some, some fun dialogue if you manage to carry her to the end of the game. But go up the stairs, go up to the king, Thank you humbly for rescuing the princess. Now, Laura, sit by my side. Father, please wait. I wish to give a gift to Bindo. I love you with all my heart. Please take my love with you. Hmm? We have no room for this. Please make room for my love. Oh. That's disappointing. You must not throw that out. <laughs> Man. Man, you know, like, there's no room for anything in this game. Done. Okay. We'll be back. I'll be back here. Because I know that, like, you're going to do a bit of item merging. So, there'll be one little bit of room in your inventory. Man, I should have done this afterwards. Dang it. Dang it, I ruined the pacing. Uh. That's, that's what I was going to get. 
But yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm enjoying Scarlet a bit more. I think I played, uh, one other game this week. I don't think I beat it. I've been going pretty hands off on, on games this week. Just, uh, just go and chill. But you know what, uh, you know what did happen this week? Uh, was, um, oh gosh, my brain just, I, my brain is farting right now. I'm just like, what did just happen this week? It's like a whole spiel, it was something, ah, it'll come to me later, it'll come to me later. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not really coming to me. I know there's, a. Uh, I got, I got one topic, which is, uh, the fun back and forths with, uh, Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, and, uh, Sony kind of going, no, you can't do that, they'll be... Uh, monopolistic, and then Microsoft's kind of like, no, you don't get it. Call of Duty isn't a very influential game. People don't talk about it on Twitter. People, it's, you know, critics rarely talk about it. The meta scores are trash, completely kind of glossing over the crazy amounts of sales, which is clearly the big reason why anyone would want to buy the Call of Duty franchise. And I'm kind of going, man, isn't the new one the 19th Call of Duty? Like, I, I know, you know, I, I'm just talking about 9th gen Pokemon, and I'm like, oh, how can people buy Call of Duty every year? It's, like, you know, when I'm not in it, I think it's harder to understand exactly, like, how that franchise even works, how that franchise is selling lots of copies. Um, I, I especially look at it and I go, is the single player really worth buying? I think people just get into it because it's the multiplayer game that they sit down and kind of forever play. Um, I don't know that many people who kind of overlap Call of Duty with other kinds of games, and I think that's one problem that Battlefield has, is that, well, it ain't Call of Duty. You know, it's not like your friends are necessarily going to be playing Battlefield. you got to go out of your way to organize that. So, you might personally want to play Battlefield, but I think in the end of, at the end of the day, you know, Call of Duty's managing to just sell more purely by it's the next Call of Duty. You want to play the next Call of Duty? There you go. Um, but yeah, no, it, it sells a bunch. And I'm trying to think, like, are there any other franchises that are kind of like that? I know Pokemon is definitely like that. Um, 10 million sales in the first week, apparently, on the Pokemon, which immediately won. That's super duper crazy high. That's super cr high. Like, that puts it as, like, 15th, like, all-time best-selling Switch game right now. And that's, like, you know, it could keep going. Who knows? Um, but also, like, just 10 million units. It's like, there are so many, like, consoles out there. If you look at, like, VG charts for, like, the best games on various consoles in terms of sale counts, it's like, Gran Turismo 1 was, like, 10.8 million. That was such a crazy good seller. And I think Pokemon is just going to, like, absolutely trump it in, like, a week and a bit. So here we go. Let's go back here. Uh, you may remember the the guy in this uh, shrine told us to bugger off. Anyway, so come back. You, the bearer of the great brave Lotto's blood. It is time for rain and sun to come together as one. Now hand me the rain stuff and the sunstone. Okay. <laughs> oh, our gods, upon this sacred altar, I offer you rain and the sun. Step forward to the altar. Take the rainbow drop and go on. What's this? The ra the, pff, the rainbow drop. There you go. Any prophecy? My work is done. I'll go. <laughs> so he was super rude to you earlier, and then the moment you've got the right items, he's just like, yeah, there well, you go. That's one thing I don't kind of like, is that there is a bit of an item fetch quest in order to, to beat the game. So you need Lotto Seal, as well as also uh, the rain staff and uh, the... Um... The Sunlight Stones. You might remember, I got them right at the end of the last stream. Um, once you got all of that, suddenly your inventory is... Oh, you still have the seal. It gives you courage. It gives you that, at least. Uh, but once you got the rainbow drip, uh, there's only one last place to go. We've explored everywhere on the map. Um, Goldman. There's only one last place to go, and that's, uh, 
the central island around it all. Man, this gold man's really taking it, but... Yeah, like, that's some crazy sail counts, and, and yeah, like, it made me kind of think, like, how many sails is enough sails? Because I think we all remember the story of Tomb Raider 2013 missing sales expectations by reaching 4.3 million sales instead of 6 million as their target, and I'm like, 6 million sales is a lot. I think that was in the first month, so Pokemon's definitely doing a good job, but, um... There's definitely just, like, some games that are just crazy runaway successes. Um, one that I was surprised about is that Mario Kart 8 is, like, the 8th highest, like, selling game in terms of units of all time. Granted, it's counting both the Wii U version and the Switch version, but it's also the Wii U version. The Switch version on its own would still be fairly high up this list. A lot of games usually count, like, re-releases as part of the, the counts. It's like how films, um, it's like how, like, I think Avatar 3D or Titanic 3D, like, surpassed a newer film because it just had a re-release. So here's this one little tiny bit of ground. If you bring the rainbow drip over here, pop it in the spot, and would you look at that? A magical bridge that kind of looks the same as the other bridge appears. I think that actually uses up the drop, yeah. So, how about let's cast a uh, return. Let's go all the way, let's get that whole lot of love back. Uh, but yeah, like, like, there are so many games on the newer platforms that just crazy outsell older platforms, and yet, the older platforms also had the, the console sales behind them. Bundo, it is good to see you. To reach the next level, you need that. You, yeah, okay, I'll record, I'll record that. Give me your love. Give me some sugar. Please take my love with you. However distant we may be, my heart will always be with you. Farewell, Bundo. And you get a love. What does a love do? Uh... I'm pretty sure it's, a, it's an equip item, isn't it? Oh no, she tells you how many experience points to reach the next level. Like, wherever you go, you can finally, like, know when the next level is. It is beautiful. That is true love. True love. Is knowing when you level up. Write that on a t-shirt. Sell it to... People who go on... Facebook. That is a Facebook t-shirt, I'll tell you that. Yeah... So, yeah, I, d I don't understand, like, sales numbers. There's always inaccuracies now, because either companies are gonna do official statements about how many copies they've sold, or you're gonna have to do some big guesswork, because retailers don't know online sales anymore. So a game might sell only so many, but it's like, eh, it might actually have online sales to back it up. Um... So you'll never truly know, but uh, I think a lot of these games are selling really good numbers now. And I guess when people go, like, games are getting more expensive to make, I know I know, I do this conversation all the time, the more I lean into, these games are also selling ridiculously more than they used to. Like, the targets are set much higher. And, and they often do meet it. But also, yeah. Why do- and I'm actually seeing this, like, polarizing my Twitter feed. Why are, like, games so large and so expensive to make? I think people might be pretty okay, in general, who knows, with games that are shorter, but have, you know, much more meaningful gameplay in them. They don't draw themselves out, they don't try to do, like, 50 million things at once. Um, this is- this is a- you know, <laughs> kind of uh, straw manning the argument a bit, but it's like, I don't mind the idea of the 20 hour game being a thing again. I think that there's so many games that outstay their welcome, they add content that just isn't that good, and they've padded it out with so many things. On the flip side, a 20 hour game might worryingly cut itself short too quick. And, uh, you know, people love Portal. And they replay Portal all the time. I've played Portal. I don't even know if I've played Portal on, on channel. Maybe I'll do that. I haven't figured out next week's game, so if, if I do play Portal, I've got no ideas, I tell ya. <laughs> I really want something Christmas related, and Portal is not a very Christmassy game. 
Uh, but I'm also going to be giving myself three weeks, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's go back here and cross all the way. Magadraki. Yeah, these enemies kind of a bit of pushovers. But oh, they get there. You get there. There we go. The Magwyvern is a pretty meaty one. Again, we've already fought him before because he was outside the, the golem. But you know, we're, this island is going to have the toughest overworld enemies. You know, naturally. You gotta go through so many mountains as well to get all there. You gotta deal with the Arm Knight. You know? Tough enemies all over the place. You gotta deal with the... the toxic ground. Because technically, you you may not necessarily have gotten Lotto's armor. There's a few items and equipment that you just might not even have. You don't need Lotto's armor, you don't need uh, the Silver Shield, um, and certainly there is a better sword that is uh, still available in this castle, let alone one in the shop. Oh, thanks for following, Bird. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Uh, I was going to say, big congrats to a follower 100 on, uh, on um, Twitch, but uh, I've also hit 100 a couple of times. And then some rando unfollows, so you get to be one of the 100th followers, but... That's a great title to have. Come up the stairs, and here we are, the castle. Also, you might be you might be thinking, oh, there's ground over there. Yeah, that's literally Tantagil Castle, right there. <laughs> I think I think this guy is like one. His girlfriend sorry, his girlfriend, his daughter got captured. I'll be <laughs> That's a that's a slip if I said girlfriend. Whoops. Yeah, totally not, yeah. Um but also it's just like there's an evil castle literally there. So in we are. The castle is a bit ominous, and it's kind of filled with uh, some dangerous passageways. It's actually not too bad. Especially because I've got the armor that lets you heal every step. Even if you don't have that, you've got the magic armor, but uh, you don't have to worry about these bits of ground. Go up to this uh, big chair. I'm very certain, I'm very certain you got to interact with the chair somewhere. But, uh, yeah, this has the same encounters as the town, I think. So it's got dragons. There's, um, yeah, the destroyed town. That dragon is so much less health than the one in front of the princess. That's what I was thinking. But they're all dragons. There we go. There's a hidden stairwell back here. I think, actually, in both staircases, you're screwed. Like, you go downstairs and you just hit a dead end. You have to know that there's a hidden path right there. And... You gotta burn a key in order to do it. But I'm also like, I'm pretty sure you're at the town with the keys. So... Also, you can just buy keys at, um... At, uh, Tantacle when you die. Which I shall do next time, because I, I... I don't think you need more keys after this, but... Yeah. Other than that, I think it is a long walk through corridors... To basically, like, get your way to the end, uh, to the end of the dungeon. And these guys might deal some decent damage. Uh... But, it's all about attrition. It's like, how far can you get, and then you run out of magic, and then you go, yeah, no, I'm starting again. Only thing I wish, is that these guys gave a bit more experience, because, uh... I mean, we're at the end of the game. I'm still level 17. I guess, I guess I'm closer to 20,000 experience than I was before. Um... And if 20,000 is the level up, I'm like, oh, cool. You know? Uh, but yeah, no, sales are crazy um, on newer games. And uh, never mind also, we live in an age of DLCs and microtransactions and all this other stuff. So, you know, there is, there is money going towards games that is not necessarily the money that you see. Um, ah, here we go, some stronger enemies. We got Rock Golem. The Rock Golem starts hitting kind of hard. I don't, there's no better armor for me in the whole game, so... We're gonna play this naturally. Um, but I can cast Heal More. I've got Heal More, so... If I'm really taking it, I'll just heal a bit more. There we go. The Rock Golem's defeated. How much experience? 
155. It's not too shabby, not too shabby. The Mad Knight, this is the same as the boss, I think. Am I even higher level than when I fought him the first time? I don't think I am. I think I'm actually just like as as good as I was. But I did get a crit, so that's pretty okay. 130 experience, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, you could probably... I'm not too sure if you could use the, the, the one, the repel effectively. You kind of need the experience though. You do, you do need the experience because uh, like all classic JRPGs, the end boss kicks your butt. The end boss is a mean numbers check. And in this game, there's not much strategy really because you attack, they attack, you attack, they attack. Here we go, 130 experience. I'm running out of M, so I've got to make sure I've got six left over. Then I can run to the um, to the town, and heal up. I don't think the people outside the town are really going to give me problems. I think it's just going to be these guys. There's Blue Dragon. He's a bit purple, but yeah, sure. And he breathed fire. The breathing fire is not actually that bad. I think it's because. You know, I've got resistance to magic, so if you cast Fireball or Breathe Fire, it falls under that boat. There you go. The other kind of interesting thing with uh, console sales is that the, um, yeah, for different generations, the number of physical consoles seems to line up differently to, like, how much, um, you know, how, how many of the games sold. The PlayStation 1 sold a lot of units, but surprisingly, the game sales were actually pretty in line with, uh, with uh, the, the PlayStation games. The, the top selling games all sold roughly the same kinds of amounts, maybe a little more on PlayStation, but uh, the consoles on the PlayStation were really high, and I think what it was is that a lot of people bought the PlayStation but weren't particularly into other kinds of games, or they'd only buy one game, or, or yeah, small niche of games. There you go, defeated the Draco Lord. That's that was him. That was that was him right there. This cave keeps going, by the way. It's darn long. And you get money. The herb. The herb. I, I've gotten a basic healing item. Sick. And of course, you know, the music getting more and more dismal as you go along. Uh, oh. The Mad Knight. Oh, oh, <laughs> we're not going to sleep today, but yeah, no, this, I, I mean, this is the end dungeon. This gets gnarly. Level 18. Ma it's, your stats start skyrocketing so hard. 15 max health, your strength rose by 13. I'm going to, I'm going to be feeling it, I tell you. This is a wonderful room because it's just, it doesn't go anywhere. It is just here, because why not? Keep wandering around. It's the golem. So the goal, hopefully, is I can get all the way to where the, um, the sword is. This guy is gonna make it a real problem for me though. But I am dealing a lot more damage. I am dealing a lot more damage. That's making it a bit nicer to take him out. Uh, okay, so I think we keep going down. There's some symbols of dragons again. Now, okay, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, more dragons. There's another, another staircase here. And boom, here we go. The chest. What's this? The Lotto Sword, but I've got no more space. What if I... Oh, I've got the love in here. Well, let's use the herb. Why not? 
Open the chest. What is this? The Lotto Sword? Here we are. The Lotto Sword. Check this equipment. I'm equipping the Lotto Sword. It's another 20 attack. It's so good. Uh, don't need the other sword. Um, yeah, there was a Flame Sword. I skipped it because I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get this at some point. I probably- I can't even afford the Flame Sword. I'm pretty sure it's like 9,800 or 9,000. Um, I could probably have worked for it, but yeah. So let's cast outside. Let's get out of here. Let's heal up, sell off the sword. There is no more use for money. Like, this is the best equipment in the game now. But this sword, it's like, it's gonna just help top off that little bit of extra damage. Like, now I'm dealing 50 to these enemies. They were taking two, you know, three goes earlier. Now they're dealing two goes. And, uh, yeah, every, every piece of experience is gonna help just keep going. We're at 21,000. I don't know the experience curve. Just gonna keep going. Just gonna keep going, so. Uh, that was... Probably like two-thirds to the dungeon. Yeah, it kind of keeps going for a bit. The golems, the rock golems, were definitely the biggest, like, oof there. Um, but yeah, uh, what's coming up this upcoming week? So, nothing in particular, really. I mean, it's, it's gonna be December soon, so pull out the Christmas avatars, because apparently December starts immediately. Um, I love how, uh, my mate was telling me, the Macy's Christmas, sorry, the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade in New York, and Mariah Carey comes on and sings All I Want For Christmas Is You. And I'm like, this is the Thanksgiving Parade, and you're singing a Christmas song. I assume this happens all the time, but like, that's amazing. Like, actually, actually, I got an email from, from Krispy Kreme, Australia. They do donuts, and um, I'm pretty sure there's Krispy Kreme in the States, is there not? You guys are missing out. The Krispy Kremes are great. They're overkill. I would not- I would never binge on them. I would love a Krispy Kreme sponsorship. If you guys are out there, send me your best batch a dozen. I will literally eat them on stream and tell everyone how wonderful Krispy Kreme is. And all you gotta do is actually just pay me with donuts. You don't even have to pay me with money. Just get, just give me a free box and I'll be like, mmm, oh, so good. <laughs> That's some bribery right there, but... Also, they're like... Also, they're like, didn't you just plug us just then? I was like, yeah, I guess. I guess. Dang it, Krispy Kreme, you work in mysterious ways. Point is, um, they, uh, they emailed me saying, uh, like a generic promo promotional email, uh, going, uh, say I do for Valentine's Day. And I'm like, it's, it's still November. They've gone past Christmas. They're going straight for Valentine's Day. Gutsy fellas. I think it's because Christmas is not a very good donut selling time. Valentine's Day is great. All you gotta do is sell donuts for other people. Whereas Christmas is like there's too many people. And you're also eating turkey. And donuts don't work well with turkey. I should have sold I should have sold the other sword. I'm gonna go back for that. So yeah, if I die and I lose my money, who cares? That's kind of interesting. I was I was a little bit concerned about like, ooh, if I lose all my money, that's gonna like real, you know, waste my time. I don't think it wasted any time. Like I can't think of really, yeah, any time wasted. Um, steel sword. I'll give you 750 gold for it. I should also buy more keys. Now, do I remember where the guy sold keys? It was like around here, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was up there, so I have to go around the normal way. I'm pretty sure I could just leave the town from, like, down here. Nope. Wow, I, I'm locked in this prison. I cannot flee. Uh, but yeah, like... I mean, granted, am I the sucker here? I kept talking about Black Friday deals for, like, multiple weeks on end. Probably because I was looking way too into it. Like, I'm, I'm watching Buildzoid, I'm watching The Bower. I'm, I proceed to purchase nothing that The Bower showed. I'm watching Level 1 Techs, I'm watching a bunch of YouTubers. All, all they do is talk about tech products. Hey, you my boy. And they sell no more now. There you go. 
for some more keys. Because you gotta open that one door every time. Uh, but I got a bit more magic, 105, 101 magic. And that guy, if he was me, he would be on one health, but he is not. He is dead. I love just like how, yeah, you just start one hitting all these enemies and you're like, yeah, nah. This wolf, no problem. He's just gone. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, am I the sucker for like buying stuff and, and buying into uh, Thanksgiving deals and all this stuff? Yeah, maybe. I was really longing out for like new computer parts, so. I thought, eh, would spoil myself with it. But, yeah, at the end of the day, it's also like, yeah, you know. Domino's is charging more for pizzas usually. And they give a deal, and it's like, yeah, that deal looks good, but, you know. I used to be able to get four, four pizza deals for so much, and now you can only get three pizza deals for that price. You know, everything's getting a bit expensive. This is like such a spirit dampener. It's like, yeah, consumerism is great, but oh no, everything's getting expensive. So hopefully the world fixes itself in some way. Because, um, yeah, it's a bit wacky right now. It's all a bit wacky. But you know what? Like, we got 18 damage. Wow. Stuff the golems. Wyvern's the real, you know, spooky thing. At least you can kill it quick and then just, like, walk it off. It's just a flesh wound. Unless you gotta fight another one, then then you can't walk it off. Or he can just heal it. He can heal himself. There we go. Defeated the Star Wyvern. Wyvern. Oh. And we got a magic one. Why not? They're all magic. This one's magic. He dies in one hit. How magic. So now it's just like, yeah, you just like, you know, clean off enemies, keep going. You get any experience, like, it's nobody's business. But, uh, yeah, I think the rough goal is you reach around level 20. Level 19 is when you get the, le uh, the last spell, which is the next level. Um, you can go up to level 30, but... I, I feel like you're probably very overleveled for that, and obviously there's nothing else to equip. You're at the mercy of whatever stats your name generates, but that's okay. Make sure you remember where the, where the stairs was. There you go. Let's cast Radiant. And uh, continue the long trek that I had already done. But this time with a bit more gusto, because now I can deal a bit more damage to the enemies. This dragon, well, he still hits me, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, if you really wanted to, I guess, where would you grind for levels? Uh, why am I going into my p inventory to see how much experience I need when I can hear the love of and I know that I need only 2,670 experience points to get to the next level. Which is probably going to happen on the way down. I don't know if I would hit the next level by uh, by the time I've properly hit the bottom of the, the dungeon. Wow, I actually fell asleep for once. <laughs> okay, not fall asleep again. Uh... Yeah, I think the biggest thing to be just like overtly cautious of is, uh, in in terms of sales, is just uh, and I know it's a little too late because it's November 28 now, um, but it's just uh, you know, never overspend, never buy anything you never really wanted to buy. Don't feel like you gotta buy stuff because it's on sale because it's like well most of the time it's either bad or not bad, sorry, but like most of the time it's like well I mean it's either bad or it's kind of on clearance anyways. Or, uh, it really isn't something you need. It's, which granted, maybe it's hard for people in the market to really compete. You know, they want you to get their products somehow. But, hey, you don't have to feel bad for the multi-billion dollar corporations. You know, like, oh, how sad not as many people bought TVs this year. It's like, yeah, like, when you need a TV, you'll get a TV. When you don't need a TV, don't feel pressure into buying a TV. 
The blue dragon. So, yeah, I'll, I I am excited to to share the fruits of the computer parts I bought, um, and hopefully do a bit of a uh, bit of tweaking and and configuring and really making it like a super comfy and a fairly good rig that has a five-year-old graphics card in it because uh, graphics cards are still so pricey. This is getting bad. It's getting bad. I mean, I could go AMD, but I do need CUDA for things. So like, I'm in that legitimate use case that really relies on Nvidia. I'm glad paying a bit of a premium for Nvidia. I'm not glad paying that much of a premium for them. It's, it ain't worth that much to me. But it's worth fairly much because it's a blocker on a use case. So instead, I guess I'd be downsold into just buying a worse card. I guess that's my catch. Like, I, I'm willing to buy a 3060 because it accomplishes what I want, I guess, but... The 3060 isn't going to outperform my 1080 Ti in gaming. So continue in the dungeon. We'll go this way instead of down towards the center there. And uh, it's now a linear path to the to the goal. I haven't healed manually. This is doing this is going pretty alright. I don't know if I fought a rock golem yet. I got a lot of health these rock golems, but can I beat him in three hits? I can't beat him in three hits, so that's gonna save me a lot. 155 experience, not too shabby, not too shabby. Let's go north. And some pedestals. And then it's a pretty straight route. It's like, oh, where do I go? Now we got the red dragons. We got the real cream of the crop enemies right here. Stop spell. Now I can't. I can't heal. I am Bundox. And he's, he's dead because... 350 experience. Okay. Stuff fighting above there. Fight here, man. This is where you get all the, all the good levels. Think about it, 350 experience means if you fought 100 of them, you'd basically hit max level now. Keep going, keep going, cross the room. Oh, not quite. An Axe Knight, so these guys mean serious business. And they heal. And also they got Fire Bane, it's, it's super duper fireball. They got a lot of health. And they keep healing. That's fun. That's real fun. They hit a bit hard. Funny number health. I seem to be attacking first though, so... I can kind of cheese it a little bit, but not too bad. Once you're up from here, you are finally on the final floor. Where even is this, like, room-wise? Because it's like, that's the... I mean, that's, that's water. I don't know where we are. Head up north. And, uh, still gotta deal with this. Yeah, there's more Axe Knights. There's more things that are out there to kill me, but... Oh, get him with the crit. Yeah! Oh, that was so good. That was so good. Look at this! Oh, I was gonna say it's a door, but on the side. The most cursed thing. Oh, oh! <laughs> Gotta make sure you don't miss. This guy definitely means serious business, but that's okay. I'm victorious. I got money. I got experience. Open the door. And in this chest is the double belt. Why did I do that? <laughs> why did I actually put that on? Um, what, what specifically does the double belt do? The waist belt or the double belt? Uh, making him unable to move. The only way to remove the curse is to speak to the elderly magician Tentacle Town. Why did I do that? 
I have cursed myself. What's this, the mystic nut? You know what's the worst part? I can't get rid of the devil belt. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Well, that's just gonna- that's just gonna put a damper on my day, so... Let's just leave. Waste my time. Go all the way back. What a meme of an item. What a meme. Alright. Let's, let's show it off to Tentacle. Your curse! Get out! <laughs> get out of here! So I gotta go here and then, uh... I'm pretty sure the magician is in the corner? He wasn't like... Nah, yeah. He was in the corner, wasn't he? Or was he in this room? Or was this a shop? Yeah, there he is. That's a corner of someone. I say, curse lifting spouse. Oh. You curse. Let me lift that curse. Yeah, I'm done. Godspeed. <laughs> Good thing you can't use it again. I'm glad you can keep using it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Man, for getting rid of the curse. Very helpful. Let's just sell it. Let's just, like, give it to some poor, unsuspecting fool. Uh, yeah, yeah, the double belt. The double belt, I'll give you 180 gold. Yeah, <laughs> here you go. Hey, just have it. Have it, bro. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't sweat. <laughs> just take it. Uh, that's a, that's a trend that Dragon Quest does have. It's got the, uh, cursed items that are just notoriously just traps. You equip them, yeah, nah, you're goofed. Um, oh, you can always get rid of them, and they're always, like, temporary issues, and in some cases they actually could be slightly useful at the cost of some other kind of stat. Um... But yeah, no, in this game, nah. Yeah, it's just that. <laughs> so I'm glad I witnessed that firsthand, and now I gotta walk all the way back to, back to the dragon, back to the the castle. How many more experience points in the next level? Like clearly, I'm not gonna get it fighting these slimes. That's the Laura love. Uh, 789. Let's search that up as well. Let's continue on. But yeah, no, December is uh, upon us. Nearly the end of the year. And uh, perhaps I should figure out some retrospectives for bits of the year. But, um, you know, one thing I'm very impressed about is uh, this is my second, like, full year of doing these game streams on Twitch. And, uh,. I guess, uh, to, and, and, and re it on YouTube, because a lot of people view these on YouTube. I don't want to discount the people on YouTube. So, for you at home who sticks around, and especially right now in the middle of a Dragon Quest stream, um, you know, you're awesome. You, you, you know, you stick around, you're, you're watching these streams, you're either interacting in the chat, or, um, you know, leaving comments, um, some, some of you were sharing it with friends. And that stuff, like, you know, that's, that's real cool. That means something to me. Because it's like, hey, that means I made something, and, like, you appreciate it so much, you want someone else to kind of witness it. Um, you know? Might not seem like a lot, maybe, but <laughs> it's also like, yeah, it, you know, it's pretty cool to just, like, have stuff that makes you enjoy, enjoy something. Find something new to enjoy, find something old to enjoy, find something about something to enjoy. That's the whole point, that's the whole reason why I do these. And to make you laugh at like silly comments from time to time, but mostly, mostly to, you know, see something new that you, that you thought about, or, or something that you, you, I don't know where I'm going with that one. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess retrospectively in the year I've played 11 games? I think this is the 11th one. If it's not, it's the 10th one. Um, 
definitely... I didn't play, like, a crazy long JRPG. Like, this is the JRPG of the year. Whereas, like, last year, I'm pretty sure I had, like, Pokemon Gold. Oh, I did Pokemon Gold this year. True. Let me get a list of, like, things I played this year. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Um... And some release dates. So at the beginning of the year, I played uh, Warrior Land 2, and uh, I guess I, I guess eventually I shall return to to Warrior Land. Um, uh, but yeah, no, that was that was good fun, and especially good for me because I kind of felt like overwhelmed by that game. I was like, man, you know, that's gonna be a tough one to like really understand again. And yeah, it is a bit. It was a little tricky, but I got there in the end. I got there in the end. Um, and, uh, every stream went on for quite a fair bit, but that's okay. Uh, after that I played Quake. I love Quake. I know it all too well. And, uh, those were some remarkably well-timed streams for, um, going through it. But in particular, that was Quake 2021. Like, all that content was, like, six months old when I played it. Um, so it's, it kind of means a, a fair bit to me. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then played Wirehead. Singular stream. Uh, you might have missed it, but that game is... wacky? So, I, I would, I kind of would like to get into a little bit more of full motion video titles. Um, but I also want to find ones that aren't just me sitting back watching a video and then going, Yep, what a cool game. And like, everyone plays the game the exact same way. Wirehead's an interesting one because I feel like it's kind of lost to time, but... I don't want to play something like Night Trap. Because Night Trap is just one where it's like, you can't really talk over it, and you can't really do anything different. And lots of people played Night Trap. So you can't really do much about that. Um, but I thought Wirehead was pretty alright, so we'll go with that. Um, I then played uh, Monsters Inc. Scream Team. This was a classic example of like, uh, well this was one of the childhood games that I, I had never actually played on the channel. There we go, level 19. Look at these stats, keep going up. That is not as high as it used to. But we learned a new spell, Firebane. So, which I feel kind of pales. Like, you kind of burn a lot of magic in order to cast Firebane. You can't use it out on the field, of course, but... Uh, let's Radiant. Let's continue on, yeah. Uh, then after that, I had uh, one stream, a one-off stream. I, th I think people, I hope you guys kind of appreciate the one-offs. Maybe I'll do just more one-offs in general. Um, but uh, I, I did a look at uh, the first two editions of the PlayStation US magazine. Um, and then played along with their demo discs. And I feel like that's an interesting kind of recollection through time. It's just like, you know, what is this like? What is this, like, period of, of time where, uh, you know, people have to read magazines for information? Ooh. But, it was pretty cool, and, and especially reading through it, seeing the ads, seeing what, uh, kind of things that they thought the future held. Um, seeing fun stuff like Parappa the Rapper constantly praised, and people had no idea how to classify it, so they called it a puzzle game, because, I mean, you, you, you match the buttons, right? It's a puzzle, but, like... It's a rhythm game, but what is a rhythm game at that time? That wasn't a genre people thought was going to be a thing. So, definitely great fun. Uh, after that, I played Super Mario Galaxy 2 with a big, uh, kind of long playthrough. This was a well-deserved one, um, because I feel like uh, I didn't do great honor to it. Um, in the last, uh, well, I mean, I, I think I played it on my channel briefly in 2011. And I got up to, like, I remember it was, like, part 24, 25 or something. Um, this was back in the 15-minute YouTube days as well, so that all the parts were pretty short. Um, and I feel like I got fairly through the game, but, like, 70 or so stars. But I stopped all of a sudden, and I just never continued it. Um, I think I had a terrible capture setup, and that kind of dissuaded me from wanting to play, like, Mario Galaxy 2 on, on camera. Uh, but... 
I did Mario Galaxy 1 last year, I'll do Galaxy 2, and uh... I feel like it worked really nicely, and especially going through and getting all the green stars, um, having to do a bit of a grind session for the star bits. But at the end of the day, I thought it was pretty alright. Uh, and then, uh, that went for a while, so by July, I then played, a uh, Theme Park World, or otherwise known as Sim Theme Park in the States. Um, this one, I have no idea how. It's got the best views of possibly all the streams I've ever done. It keeps getting, uh, it keeps getting views. Um, and I think it's probably because it's that right, like, bit of, it's nostalgic, uh, for definitely a lot of people. Maybe people don't actually play through it all the way through, they just kind of play a bit and go, yeah, no, that's alright, but I feel like, uh, like, there's a little bit more to show in the games, like, there's a couple of rides I just didn't unlock, but I did a full two-hour session of every single park in the game, and I feel like, yeah, that, that is a great, like, showcase of the game. If I say so myself, you know what I mean. But, like, I, I feel like, yeah, like, that's kind of what I wanted out of those streams. Um, and it's something different, I guess. Maybe people don't expect me to play those kinds of games, and honestly, I don't have a too many of, like, those simulation park builder kinds of games, city builder kinds of games. I've definitely played a few, I enjoy them, but I haven't played many. Um, so who knows, I, I might figure out how to play a few more. Figure out? I might figure out a few more that would make sense for the channel. Continuing through the through the dragon quest a bit, but uh, just back to the channel. Uh, there was Spyro the Dragon in uh, early August. I did two streams of that because I can whoop through the game. Um, again, I feel like I had played that ages ago. I wanted to do it more justice. And I know more about the game now than I did back then, so... Um, Oh, I forgot to mention Quake, and I, I was I was going through back uh, this back again. I forgot that um, when I played uh, the main game of Quake, not only did I play through like the first two episodes in the first stream, but then I also just speed runned it. I just kind of was like, I'm gonna start a new save, go on easy. We're just gonna go. Whoa, here's all the fun like you know shortcuts and things you can do in it. And then the second stream was like basically the second half of the game. I played through it, and then I said, let's do it quick. Um, and I kind of feel like. I would love to play more games where I know quicker strats in them. Um, I've got one off the top of my head that I know, I know I could do a really good run with, so. But I've got to really practice it because, uh, it's a doozy and I think it's, it is just a doozy. I don't think it's like quite as bad as I, I feel, but. It feels like a lot of work, because it's it's one of the tougher, like, faster runs that, that I know I can kind of do. Um, still nowhere towards a world record time, but, uh, yeah, that one's pretty cool. Uh, but then after Spire of the Dragon 2 streams, I did one stream of Vanishing Point on the PlayStation 1. Someone sent me Facebook messages, that was me, that was not you, that was me. I just want to clarify that. I'm going to now click, I'm going to say, mute, mute site, you're never going to hear Facebook again. I apologize. People send me messages through Facebook. I've got to really stop that. Oh, My perfect quality stream, alas. Uh, okay, well, back here. No more demon item. But I am going to get the Axe Knight suddenly hitting me, which is not fun. Uh, but yeah, look, Vanishing Point on the PS1. I played through the mission mode of that. I'm amazed that I was able to even, like, beat the mission mode, but, because it felt like just very blind luck, but you know what, I'll accept it. Um, so sure. Uh, and then Tomb Raider 2, this one was fairly long, fairly long, and bonus points to, um, yeah, every stream being over two hours, uh, and then I played the Golden Moss um, expansion in a single sitting. 3 hours 37, which makes it the only stream I have ever played into the Tuesday. It, it, it continued into the next day, because that was so long. Um, so yeah, that was good fun. And then uh, the last... Oh, for Halloween, uh, Resident Evil Director's Cut. And that was pretty good, because I managed to fit all four streams in Halloween, which was nice. And then uh, just before this, I played LEGO Racers. So, how many games does that make? Um, so that makes 
Warrior Land, Quake, uh, Wirehead, Monsters Inc., Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, Theme Park World, Spyro the Dragon, Vanishing Point, Tomb Raider 2, Resident Evil, Lego Races. That makes this the 12th game of the year on stream. I am, like, if there's one thing I'm terrified about playing games on stream, playing 12 in a year, I'm gonna run out of games fairly soon. The Herb, well, if I wanted to heal myself, sure. 417 gold, sure. Empty, cool. The key, well, I'll take a key. Empty. 535 gold. The warp wing. Well, there's no point of the warp wing. The warp wing just lets you use outside for free. So, pretty much as a cursed item, in fact, maybe the only cursed item, uh, an actual stat increase, and then just a bunch of ancillary items. That was well worth checking twice, but you know what? Sure, okay. Accept it. It's got the fire bane. Whoa. Uh, but yeah, no, I've definitely really enjoyed playing the games this year, and I, I hope as well people kind of appreciate that I'm not just going to be playing all the same games uh, every year. There might still be, you know, you can never rule out like, oh, I'd love to play this older game again and, you know, see how it, how it ages. Um, uh, but I felt like the biggest thing that I wanted to do when I started, you know, kind of putting stuff back on the channel was just to go back through the games that I just didn't feel I did a great job covering, um, and just kind of go, I only use this five magic, actually, that's not too bad. Um, definitely better than, like, the heal. The heal takes a lot of magic. Like, eight is a lot when you can't recover MP. Um... And that was a very, very great crit, right at the the point where I dealt way too much damage anyways. Um, but yeah, like, I, I really wanted to just redo the games that um, I played when I was pretty much prepubescent on on uh, YouTube. And I feel like I've covered most of them. There's the Warrior Lands, um, there's Donkey Kong Country, which I'll, I'll save and get to. Earthbound is definitely... Definitely going to be a tough one to get on YouTube because the audio is very hard to get past uh, the sensors. So anyway, cover the cover the last few bridges. Oh, there's no mini bosses on the way. Don't worry. Let's cast some fire, Bane. I'll tell you that. Go. And down this hallway is, it is him, the one, the only, is he, actually, is he going to announce who he is? Hi there. Oh, he's Dracolord. Good of you to come, Bundo. I am the king of kings, Dracolord. I have been waiting, waiting for a man like you to come. Join me, Bundo, and I shall give you half the world. Well, will you join me? Um, I forgot what happens if you say yes. I don't want to. I don't want the game to boot me out, so I'm gonna say no. What's wrong? Do you not want half the world? It's a fair bargain. Well, will you join me? So you insist on fighting with me, fool? You will pay for your stupidity with your life. And uh, here we are. This is the final boss, Draco Lord himself. He's uh. A bit scary, because he's uh, got a staff, and he's left-handed. And you know what? Ugh. Left-handed people. A little bit scary. So, he's got a hilarious sprite in the original NES game. Um, but the big thing to watch out for is, uh, if you're playing the Game Boy version, remember, everyone's got more health. Everyone's gonna absolutely, like, be fairly difficult, because, honestly, like, this is a bit of a cakewalk in the original. Like, <laughs> he's got like a hundred health, and you, you still deal the same amount of damage, basically. And you're so fast at him. You get the you get the leg up on hitting him, but he is constantly healing more. That's really not fair, healing more. 
Oh, I might. Oh, okay, I woke up immediately. Also, have you heard this music keep going on? Oh, let's heal. So you can play that game. That's what your magic reserves are all for, anyways. So basically, just like heal when you need to. It's a pretty simple fight. There you go. Also, yeah, you got the, the Lotto Sword. Like, what else are you gonna do? So, that was it! Unless Draco Lord's form slowly fades. Oh my goodness! Oh! Draco Lord's true form emerges! Uh, yeah, so Draco Lord is a massive dragon. And, uh, yeah, uh, did you just see how much damage he dealt? Again, did you see how much damage you dealt? I get room for one hit. I don't trust that much health. I'm gonna do another heal more. Cause yeah, he's still like 44 damage. Oh, but the crit does help. The crit does help. It's got the intense flames as well, so that can be real. Okay, he just moved faster than me. Oh, Bundo, how can you die? How can you die? A silly, silly man. How can you die? Well, tell, tell me if I'm about to die. Okay, you are just not gonna tell me unless I use, I use the love. I should have used the herb. 1604. Well, I mean, the enemies on the way down aren't gonna give you experience, but is it enough? Ah, we'll see. I am at level 19. Like, the general guidance is people say 20, maybe 21, but yeah, Draco Lord ain't the easiest, and it's okay. I did get the first phase down though. I have no idea how much health he takes though, but I don't think the second phase can heal. Actually, I don't think the first phase could heal on the NES either. You just kind of took it, so. Listen, this Game Boy version... Honestly, the Game Boy version is pretty fair, though. Because, like, you do get your experience faster. Like, I do feel like I grinded in this game. But it's also, like, that is kind of the whole game. And honestly, like, when you wander, you, you wander your way all the way to, to Draco Lord, and you're like, yeah, like, this is a bit of an adventure. It's a bit of a trek. And that's kind of the neat thing. No one's really there to guide you and to like tell you like oh you're doing a great job you know it's just like people tell you what they know what they think and it's up to you to just kind of like piece it together and go yeah this is here this is there this guy wants this item I still think that yeah, it's a bit quirky with like the key items that you have to kind of grab but in the sense of just wandering around the world figuring out everything and just gradually over time the game itself gives you the progression you don't necessarily have to understand the game but you know it's not too complex it's not like too too mysterious to really understand you just kind of you go i don't think you've ever seen me cast the fireball spell i'm just gonna go on out of here you know? <laughs> Magician. Man, I'm not having a fun time going through here. I'm pretty sure I have fought every single enemy in the game at some point. I can't think of any that I haven't. Um, there's only so many, like, enemy types as well. Every single one of them's pretty much got a reskin variant at some point, except for Draco Lord. Um, but you know, they're all, like, super classic. It's like, you know, the slime is ultra classic, the Draki is, I can't think of a Dragon ga uh, Dragon Quest game without the Draki. I know they love their scorpions, I know the, um, the ghosts come back in a few games, the wyverns in particularly lots of games, um, the wolves a lot of games, um, I'm not too sure if the Axe Knight turns into like the restless armor in later games, I'm not too sure if he's like related in, in terms of design there. Skeletons definitely show up a bunch. Um, definitely the, the golems, um, all over the place in, in Dragon Quest. They love them. I think I'm actually over the... No, I'm not. Fine. 
It's not like I ran out of magic. Oh, okay. Uh, and certainly the dragons appear in so many dragon quests. Not all of them. I think that's kind of surprising. You're gonna, like... I would love to keep playing more dragon quests. I know it's such a, a binge. And also, um, I'm terribly worried about uh, the games after Dragon Quest VI. So, uh, in terms of length. Because... The last thing I want to do on this channel is just be like, Hey guys, I'm playing Dragon Quest VII. And then, 50 streams later, I'm done. Because it is a long game. Um... So, I sometimes was a little worried about, like, some of the older games I played on my channel as well. Just, like, general RPGs. I... Because, I mean... I remember playing Golden Sun on a whim. I still have no idea why exactly I even picked Golden Sun to do on stream, but... Oh, sorry, to do on YouTube ages ago, back in 2008. But, uh, once I did actually play through it, I was like, yeah, this is actually, like, pretty digestible. Too bad I lost a save, so I'm gonna have to recreate the save, effectively. Um... Because uh, it's, got, it's got a system where you can send the save to the next game. Uh, so it remembers the things that you've done from the first game. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, I've just got to watch my streams and just redo all of it, which shouldn't be too bad, because, I mean, I can just play it with a bit of fast-forward, uh, and I also know what I'm doing, so there's none of those, like, wandering around just not doing stuff. Um, but it should still take a bit of time. Uh, and that's the biggest reason why I haven't played the sequel just yet. Um... Also, I did a blind run of Resident Evil, and I... Like, on the one hand, I would love to play generally games that I have played before. Even if my memory, like Dragon Quest, even if my memory is totally fading. I kind of like the idea of just like, this is a game I know, and I really enjoyed, and I know I'll enjoy, and I hope you guys at home uh, experience some of the joy as well. How many keys? I've got three. Okay. I guess you only need one now, because I burnt another one to go into the, um, uh... The room with the chest, but now you I don't need it. I only need the one key to go through the beginning. It's the Mad Knight. At some point, I should be able to get a level up, like, fairly soon. Hopefully before this guy kicks my butt. Oh my gosh. Wow. We're just gonna let that guy kick my butt. Alright, well, hopefully, hopefully my health starts coming back as I go over here. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's enough meta discussion about streams and stuff. And obviously, I'm gonna try and figure out a Christmas game to play. Uh, I've got three streams. I've gotta figure out what game fits in three streams. Or, do I do two games or three games across three streams? Uh, the possibilities are not endless, because there's only so many games out there, and especially there's a lot of games that get ruled out. But, yeah, there's definitely a few interesting, interesting picks. Um, so, you're gonna have to wait until next week to see. Uh, but clearly the goal of this stream is finish the game, and that's clearly the end boss there, so I'm gonna keep throwing myself at him until, uh, until I get him, because... That's pretty much it with this game. There's nothing really else to do. You have to pretty much go everywhere and kind of encounter everything. Um, like if I just kind of refresh, uh, I'm pretty sure I've got a tab open with the retro achievements, which are currently ticking off as I do this. And I think the only Dragon Quest 1 achievements I haven't gotten is... Um, there is one for... Uh, uh, reaching level 30, there's one for beating the golem without using the pixie flute to make him sleep, that one's gutsy. Uh, then, accept Draco Lord's off offer, uh, bring the princess to Draco Lord. I don't know if that does anything. And then, uh, pretty much beat, hit the credits. So, there's not too much really left of the game to really encounter, and those few things that, like, I'm probably not going to encounter them. I'm not going to encounter, like, what happens when you beat the golem without using the flute. The game's designed to use the flute. I'm going to use it, dang it. 
Uh, let's check the love. 475. I'm definitely going to hit that before I get down to the Draco Lord again. And I walked into the dead end, so I'm definitely going to hit that. There's no point finding metal slimes, really, because it's like you got to fight so many weaker enemies, then have a chance of hitting them. When kind of you can fight a bunch of these enemies, like five of these enemies equals a metal slime, and I think that's probably more worth it. The Mad Knight appears. Yeah, do I have a list on like Draco Lord's health in the Game Boy version? I do. Oh, hey, his first phase in the NES version has 100 health. He's also got less defense, so he even takes more damage. Uh, in the Game Boy version, it's 240. Then the second phase, it's 130 in the NES version, and 361 in this version. It is significantly more, uh, but he does have less defense, so he's got that. He does deal about the same amount of damage, though, so... He's got that. This guy should definitely give me enough. Nope. Next guy. Oh, I don't think that way continues. Ah. <laughs> it's all about remembering, and I am not good at remembering. I will say as well that, uh, there we go, level 20. 8 health, 12 magic though, 5 strength. Yeah, sure. I guess also keep comparing the, uh, yeah, strength, which directly correlates to then the attack stat. So, uh, I guess, what is this, another 3,000 experience until the next level? 4,000, cool. Still, I, I mean, you know, you fight a few more enemies, maybe another trek down here at the end. And that'll get you another level, so... Eh, yeah, who knows. The Mad Knight continues. But a bit more damage and taking a bit less should be alright. I don't think you can do anything about the, um, the, the end boss using... Magic, though, using his fire breath, that is going to deal a flat amount of damage. You just kind of have to deal with, like, you know, hope that he doesn't use them, or just regularly attacks. Yeah, definitely, like, the strategies you can do in this game uh, don't really exist. There's, <laughs> like, if there's one thing that uh, everyone can agree upon, is that RPGs get much more primitive as you go older. And uh, Dragon Quest is uh, notorious for maybe being too traditional in its in its approach. Um, like, there's so... Uh, pretty much every Dragon Quest game is like, yeah, it's still a menu-based select the attack and click the enemy and away you go kind of game. And that is such a turn-off for people, but I feel like it shouldn't be because what Dragon Quest lacks in terms of um, dexterity action, it kind of makes up in, in terms of presentation, bit of charm, and, and just some fun strategy. The original game, clearly, there's not much strategy. You've got a great sword, and your sword does all the damage, and it's also one button press because you're always fighting one enemy. So, it's ultra, like, fun in that primitive sense, but it's definitely, yeah, there are much more deeper and involved games, but it exists in its point of time as well. Technically, this is downstairs, so I just, I just noticed, like, oh, yeah, the stairs go down, so... The Axe Knight attacks again! And he's healing more. Why is he doing this to me? But, uh, I'm at, very, I'm at least very, very glad that, um... No, that was grinding, wasn't there? Yeah. Dang it, game. How could you do this to me? Oof, got the Firebane. There we go, knock him out. Gives you 172. I'm amazed the Red Dragons give you so much. Because they're not really any tougher than the Axe Knights, but 350 experience are definitely well worth constantly fighting. Uh, that was a cue to get another one. 
Oh well. Uh, but yeah, I also recommend uh, you at home also kind of go, hey, you know, what's your retrospective of the year? What kind of cool albums have you listened to? I've been listening to soundtracks for the blind today. I got through one disc. It's a long ass album. Um, I really enjoyed the new Wise Blood album uh, from a couple weeks back. That one's really great as well. Um, definitely probably my most conventional album that I'd, uh, I'd encourage. Uh, good of you to come, but though I am the king of kings, he is going to say the same thing. Fine. We'll accept. Most excellent. To seal our partnership, I shall take your sword. No. What's wrong? I don't know what actually happens when you say yes. I'm still afraid to say yes, because it's just like, I go all the way here. You know? I level up. It's a bit of a waste of time to get rid of that. Someone's gonna say, oh no, it's fine, you can do it, don't worry. So how much health did I say this guy has? 240? He's got a bit, so let's uh, heal some more. I should probably be healing more a bit sooner because uh, I've got a bit more max health. But he's gonna be healing more against me, which is not fun. I think the worst part as well is that you can't even cast sleep on him because he resists it most of the time. You just gotta go in for it, you just gotta keep hitting him in the face. And eventually he falls over. There we go. And now he reveals his true form! Also, no experience for this guy, no matter which stage. So. Oh well. Here we go! I got a crit on him last time. And he's gonna absolutely burninate the heck out of me. Oh! Whoa! Got that one close. Why is he faster than me? Okay, I'm faster than him now. A little bit concerned when he's faster. Uh, I can take 80. But that, the intense flames is, uh, the real meat. Oh, really? Ah, <sighs> dang it, Draco Lord. I do, I do wish there was a faster way to get there, because if there's one thing this game does, you gotta do everything on foot. You gotta wander out of this place every time you save the game, and just know the topology of the land, and go, ah yes, it's in this direction. And you know, with your 90 squares on screen, you know exactly where you're going. I always love that, that the, um, the, pretty much every, like, game console, it's like, um, for the longest time, would support pretty much a perfect number of 16 by 16 sprites on screen. So the Game Boy is a resolution of 160 by 144, which means you can fit 10 sprites horizontally and 9 vertically, and it just perfectly, like, matches. Um, so here, one thing I love is that the character is a little more over to the right of the screen than the left, but they are perfectly centered. Um, the NES, without overdraw, I believe is 256 by 224, I think? I think the PlayStation 1 is also that resolution. Um, it might be less, but I'm I'm going off the top of my head and saying it's that. And if it's not, 192 is maybe the horizontal resolution, but I'm pretty sure it's 256 by 2 by... Or it might be, yeah, 192 by 160, maybe? One, yeah. So, like, yeah, the Game Boy screen is smaller. Definitely kind of feels like that, but... Um... And then, yeah, I, I'm not too sure. I don't think the, the Nintendo 64 was consistently uh, 640 by 480. People say it is. Uh, but I think it is quite often um, half that. Uh, or sometimes uh, over overscanned. So, like, there's black bars around the screen. And it just kind of expects you to ignore the black bars. <laughs> or just, like, yeah, it's like, oh, the black bars overdraw off the screen. 
I mean, that's why it's called overdraw. That's, that's where the screen is supposed to overdraw, you know? And then at some point we went all digital and it's kind of like, yeah, if you got overdraw still, there's something kind of weird with your TV. We've got to still support it, because I, I've, I know some mates' TVs and it's like it has automatic overdraw detection. Where it, like, effectively zooms in the display. And it's like, it's very bizarre looking, because it's just like, you're in the middle of something. And then it's just like, you, it just zooms right in. It guesses what even is overdraw. Um, and especially as well, when the screen goes entirely black, it thinks it wants to zoom in on logos or other kinds of things on screen that might be there. It's very confusing. Um, so, I'm not a big fan of TVs that assume more about the source material than they even do. AKA, you know, motion interpolation. It's like, if your source content has like Dolby Atmos, like, definitions, great. Use them. That's something that the source has given you. But otherwise, most movies aren't designed for you to smooth them out. Most movies are designed to just play like they normally are. Doing upscaling and all this other stuff, I guess some people out there like it, and I don't know why people like that. I don't mind the idea of upscaling in terms of um, resolution, but uh, it's definitely like a fine area to, to kind of tread. Because the more you introduce, the less you maintain of the original, um, you know, image, the original intention of that. Um, and in general, like, you know, upscaling can introduce finer details that aren't in the original, and that's great. Um, and especially for video game content, sometimes that's actually kind of neat, because you're trying to do all this stuff in real time. If you have the ability to kind of know that there's going to be details that are very hard to render, that's a big time saver. But once you're in like the realm of pre-recorded media, it's like, yeah, usually, usually it's kind of already there. Maybe they should give instructions and then like TVs can respond to those instructions and go, ah yes, this is the ideal kind of visual output of this movie, for example. I... I'm on my last key, so, uh, please, someone remind me to buy more keys. Because I really don't want to catch my- Well, actually, I'm not even going to catch myself out, because I'm just going to go to the town and buy more keys. I don't need keys to buy keys from that town. It's just around the corner. But I am going to catch myself out if I get to that point in the dungeon, and then I go, huh. I can't- I can't- I can't go anywhere. Yeah. The TV these days is kind of weird, because it's just like... Someone's got to be the market for all these settings. It's a tough sell. It's a real tough sell for them. Back again through the dungeon. So how many floors is this dungeon? I'm pretty sure it's like eight. And this is floor three. Some of the floors are pretty tiny though. So I'm level 20, I'm kind of tanking like the blue dragons now. The red dragon, maybe not as much, but I love that like, yeah, when I went in here, I'm pretty sure I was level 17. I'm pretty sure I hit 18 like, no, I don't think I hit 18 in here. I think I hit 18 before. And now it's just like, yeah, you know, my love. 2036. It's like, yeah, I'm already halfway through the level. I have a feeling that I'll probably level up before I get to the end of here. And if I don't, then I'll just kind of hit a few more dudes. And I keep going down that dead end. I'm definitely gonna level up. Proceeds to take a while between encounters. But that's kind of what I like. It's just like, yeah, like... The experience and the levels, they come so quickly. This game doesn't really want to waste your time, it's, it wants to be a bit of an adventure. For everyone to kind of say, I slayed the Dragon Lord, this is my quest, this is my adventure. I am the warrior, if you will. The Dragon Warrior. Maybe there's ROM hacks of this game. Maybe there's like super hard ROM hacks where they add like other kinds of stuff. Um, 
I don't know if really, like, it's that hard to fit all the contents of this game into the Game Boy Color cartridge. Because, um, the Game Boy Color can store larger... Well... I don't actually know if the Game Boy Color itself can store more content than a regular Game Boy cartridge, or whether it's just because the games came out at a later point in time, because this was, um, either 99 or 2000. It, it keeps showing up on the screen when I start the game, but... But, uh, yeah, like, by that point, it's like, yeah, you started getting, like, 2 megabyte, maybe even... Uh, 2 megabyte might be pushing it, but, like, 1 megabyte Game Boy cartridges feels massive, considering, you know, we've got the classic Super Mario Brothers on the NES is 40 kilobytes. Um, 41 kilobytes. Uh, and, uh, like, then, oh, there's, you know, NES games had custom memory controllers. But then it's just like, yeah, like... How does this do it? Is this, like, does the, the memory controller, is it able to access, like, you know, large amounts of, of data? It's just people didn't want to make the chips to actually, like, contain that data? Because the NES kind of had to do that because it had a cheaper instruction set, which was kind of designed before they really were able to produce that much data. It's like how you can get, um, uh, like, I mean, if you use, like, Windows XP, you're bound to get drives that are larger than what Windows XP can detect. Because it's just a limitation with Windows XP. They said, like, this is the line. This is where we go too much, you know, too much data. No one's going to ever have that much data. And now everyone's, everyone's got so much data on them. There's, like, NASA's out there. They can't support volumes of more than 16 terabytes. I'm like, that's crazy. Because we've got 18 terabyte drives. We've got 20 terabyte drives coming into the mainstream fairly soon. I'm pretty sure Seagate managed to figure out how to, like, push up to 30 pretty okay. So, keep your eyes peeled for, for that one. Now the Red Dragon, he ain't too bad. He ain't too bad. And then lots of experience. I'm very happy. Uh, I know I'm probably above a thousand. 736! 736! I thought I was gonna have to stop and fight some dudes. Maybe I will <laughs> have to, but... Yeah, whoop! Oh, one space. Dang it, Axe Knight, they're still, they're still kinda strong. Although, able, able to two hit him kinda feels nice. Helmet hair flowing in the wind. I would hate having helmet hair. I get headphone hair. It's just it's not great. It just kind of looks funky on my head. It's not really doing anything too weird. I don't know if the enemies like stop appearing when you're on the sand. No, they don't because I clearly fought some dudes on there. They hit me with a bane. Oh. Dang it, I got caught out. I got caught out. I dealt just enough damage that it didn't kill him. And then he decided to get the easy free turn off. Oh well. Oh, it's like he can't do it again. Thank you, Bundo. Appreciate it, Bundo. See, the Druin Lord is easy source. He can't do much. He just attacks. It's all easy. Ah, oh, where was this guy a while ago? He's breathing fire. go. Kill them. Hopefully that's enough experience. There we go. 21. Max HP rose by 11. Max MP by 7. Strength by 3. Grid by 1. Agile by 2. Probably not that much. <laughs> but you know what? More stats are gonna help. All of that is gonna help. Because uh, I'm gonna keep checking my info. You know, the attack and defense keep going up. And the agility might help because it'll I mean, every time I've been killed by the dragon, it's purely because 
he's gotten the first hit. Uh, you know what? Like, it's not like I'm running out of magic. That's one thing, so... Not at 122 max magic. I've been waiting. Join me, and we shall rule the world in Koradai. Gosh, one day I'm gonna play Zelda CDI, I'll tell ya. I haven't played the Zelda game on stream yet. Hmm. Not playing Breath of the Wild. I enjoy Breath of the Wild, but oh boy, is that is that gonna be a doozy to get through? All right, he he's gonna heal, but that's okay because I deal what 49. Wow. And then I didn't check what my max health was, but I'm gonna pretend 76 is because I don't like, or rather, 76 is a healthy amount to start heal mooring. Because it's like, I don't know, maybe if I just dip into the triple digits, it's just like, can hey, I just do a heal more? Or the double digits, rather, I dip into. Man, am I actually making progress, or is he, like, constantly healing it all away? I'm at that, like, perfect cutoff where his strategy is, like, pristine. He keeps doing it! He keeps doing it. Am I actually getting anywhere here? I'm, I'm just waiting for a crit move, I guess. <laughs> He's, he oh my gosh, stop healing. Stop healing, my guy. Are we good? No, he's, he's just eternally healing. He's eternally healing. I swear, we've been... I've been through this quicker. I've been through this quicker now. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep doing this. At least, at least you tried sleep just at all, oh, and then I, and then I miss an attack. Cool. Cool beans. Just let, let me get it. Let me get this. <laughs> I, I think he's run out of magic. I think he's run out. I, I think he's topped. There we go. Man, that took its time. Uh-oh, he is turning into his true form. Again. For the third time. Alright, so, let's, uh, pretend that, yeah, 100 health is enough for, warrant for a heal. Let's go for it. I would like a lucky crit. A lucky crit would really help. But he's got some weaker attacks. The Intense Flames is not a weaker attack. How much did I say? 361, so... Yeah, this is gonna be a bit, but... War of Attrition. Either I'll get this, or... I'll get this next level. At least I've got a plan now. And the possibility to keep attacking first. Oh, okay. He's not hitting me as hard. I've got the ability to respond now. Oh, there's the crit. That's what I'm waiting for. That's gonna clear a lot of damage off. Here we go. I'm feeling this one. This is the run I'm feeling. Oh. Yeah, the crit was a bit too good. <laughs> well, that was it. The Draco Lord defeated. Bundo removed the light orb from Draco Lord's hand. When the light orb was held aloft, a blinding light pierced the dark. Peace returned to the world. And look at that. There's flowers. Can you actually go back in? Yeah, it's still an evil castle if you wanted to. This is actually kind of like a fun, and this is actually a trend that I think Dragon Quest does. It loves doing the glory walk. You've defeated the final boss. You know, encamp like experience the world returning to normal. There's flowers instead of the evil, like, deadly ground. You know, you could walk back, but why would you? When you can walk through the wonderful flowers 
Hold on, do we have flowers? Yeah, we got flowers! And then you have to wander through the dark cave with the very dissonant music. Because we haven't fixed the cave. But you know what? Let's keep the keep the spirit up. Also, you might have noticed, no evil encounters. No wild encounters. You just go. Because there, there's no evil anymore. You're holding the light orb. You are the beacon of hope. So... But yeah, no, that was good fun. Uh, yeah, it takes a few goes on the final boss, and honestly, like, yeah, there's a bit of like, yeah, you're not quite the right level, but... It gives you the tools, and it doesn't really waste your time. It's just like, yeah, you know, just gain a few levels, there you go. That makes you feel like the end boss was really that hard, even though... Eventually, at some point, you're at this crossover where he, he can't kill you, and you can eventually whittle him down. But you know what? That's fine. That's all good. I have walked right past. I love how you gotta walk all the way around here just to, you know... Get back to this castle. So hello there. Hurry, the king is waiting. I think you can actually turn up at various other towns as well. Hold on. Like just just to provide an example. If you go back to this town. You finally defeated Draco Lord. I knew right away. I can feel serenity in the air. It's proof peace is back. And I'm very certain, like so many people, respond to this orb. You really are quite the man. I wish my husband would learn a few things from you. Does this guy even let you buy things? Peace. It's like a dream. I'm in no mood for business today. Thank you ever so much. Yeah, like... You feel like you've accomplished everything, because everyone has something to say. I can't believe a person could defeat the evil Draco Lord. You truly are a hero. Let's just witness all of it. You're so handsome. You're a real man among men. Oh my gosh. We did it. We have reached first base. Welcome to our inn. It's... Uh, excuse me? <laughs> excuse me? I have saved the day? So a lot of descendant, and you were kind enough to stay at our inn. That makes me so proud. You know, you feel like you, you've done it. You've hit the big leagues. Because you defeated the Draco Lord. Yeah. Restore the world's peace. Thank you so much. Keep wandering around. Let's go. Oh my gosh. So many dudes. Hooray! Sorry. <laughs> Not hooray. Hurry! The king is waiting. Okay. Okay. Hi there, king. Oh, Bindo. The ancient legend was true. You bear the blood of Brave Lotto. You are worthy of ruling this world. Well, would you take my place as the new ruler of this country? But you replied... No, your highness. If I were to rule, I would seek my own land and build my own kingdom. I see. I won't stop you. Bundo, take care. Wait! I would like to join you. Please, will you take me with you? Sure. Oh, you've made me so happy! It is Bundo's new beginning. And away we go, with the princess, to found our new kingdom. And that's it. That's the game. A nice, sweet ending. Wrap it all together. Gives you the payoff that you feel like you've made an impact into the world. And people are like, hey, you know what? That prophecy, I'm glad it came true. But the monsters in this game, great fun to play, to, to just encounter, even if a lot of reskins. The music's so good. Um, I think that the people who localize it have done a great job, but I, I really do appreciate the kind of more light-hearted style of the, um, uh, of, uh, the... When was the first one would have been? Maybe Dragon Quest VIII, I think. Dra yeah, Dragon Quest VIII would have come out before the DS localizations of, uh, 456. So, yeah. And at that point, I was like, they know what they're doing. They, they're doing some wacky stuff, and I think, I think they enjoy doing it as well. Um... And yeah, no, this is a this is a really good fun just little game. I mean, this was what six hours. It's definitely something you can pick up and play over a weekend really easily, uh, and just kind of take it in, just enjoy it. It's good fun.
Uh, and obviously, on this Game Boy Color version, you technically have a dual cartridge with, uh, Dragon Quest 2 in there. Uh, Dragon Quest 2 is a much longer game, and, uh, perhaps I will play it at a later point in time, but it's also definitively people's least favorite Dragon Quest. Um, I think it's because it's a bit awkwardly cheap at times. It's not as bad as Final Fantasy 2, it's not mechanically broken, it's a step in the right direction, but also kind of just irritatingly not, like, quite as fine as the rest, so... Um... So yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, um, a Super Famicom version as well. Of, uh, this game. Like, specifically the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 game. I'm pretty sure. Oh well. The end. There we go. It's one of those turn off the game kinds of things, isn't it? I'm going to sit on the screen for hours and it's just like, yep, nope, it's not going anywhere. You hit the credits, good luck. Load a save, do it again. You know what, actually? Let's give him the sword. Let's give Draco Lord the sword. Because I think you deserve to see what happens when I give him the sword. That does mean I gotta do the walk again. Now technically... Yeah, so I'm back here. La, 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 la. We gotta do the long walk. I feel like you all deserve this. You gotta see what happens when you decide to just give up. Does the game end there? We'll see. Yeah, so, yeah, what is next week on stream? I have not decided yet. I have no idea what in particular to play. Um, I have... I have one idea. It's not particularly Christmas related, but... I have one idea. I'm gonna commit to it. I'm gonna commit to it. All I will say... All I will say, I'm gonna commit to this one. All I'll say is that it's a game that I have played uh, when I was younger. I think I actively didn't actually play this game, uh, but it is from a developer who uh, I have definitely played on this channel. And I will leave it at that. That doesn't really narrow much down. I should really be using the repel. You know? <laughs> I, I have the ability to ignore encounters. I'm gonna do it, dang it. Um... Oh, this game's on the Switch, isn't it? There's a Switch release of this game. How much is it? Is it just like a straight port of the Android one? Stuff the Game Boy version, just get the Switch version. I mean, at the very least, like... And, and I, I'm always surprised, like, the Final Fantasy, like, remakes, um, like, particularly if anyone's played the Steam version of Final Fantasy IV, which is based on the mobile version, which is based on the DS version, it's just, like, it's such a, a headache. Am I really not strong enough to repel the werewolves? Huh. Okay. Um, but it's such a headache to, like, play that version. It's just got so many, like, technical issues with it. So many things that just, like, keep getting into the way. Um, and it's just like, yeah, if I was playing probably the SNES version, or, uh, which was only in Japanese, but okay, maybe the, um, I'm pretty sure this is a Game Boy Advance version. Or the DS version. I would actually play the DS version. And it's like, yeah, I don't think it would have any of these problems. It'd, be, it'd, it'd just be pretty, like, a straight game. But it does get in the way. Dragon Quest is one where... At least these Game Boy versions, and then the DS versions, they're all super good versions. I can't think of really any of these versions that are just not good. Um, I think maybe the only thing is uh, if uh, the mobile version, the Android iOS version, is kind of weird in places, but... I've never personally experienced them. Also, I guess it's on Android and iOS. Like, I'm not expecting them to be particularly amazing, but maybe they are. 
I think they do the joystick approach, where it's just like it emulates like a bunch of buttons rather than like having like on the screen kinds of like, you know, con contextual actions. That's what I love about the phone. The phone is great at doing contextual actions, and then every game is designed to just like not be contextual. <laughs> Unless you're Rayman, uh, Jungle Run. Jungle Run? That was, a, that was one version, but it's like, um, the, the game they made based on Rayman Origins, which is, uh, just like, it's a runner style game. You run constantly to the right, uh, and then you can tap to, to jump, you can do your hover, um, I'm pretty sure there's a punch as well. Um, and it's like, that's it. And it's super simple, and it gets, like, it does the job. And it all feels fun and contextual, because, like, that's, you know, keeping it super simple. Makes it feel like, yeah, you're totally in control. And uh, also games where you touch on various parts of the screen. That works out fine as well, because the touch screen is great. You can tap on things in various places with pretty little effort. It's great for point-and-click adventure games that hopefully you can tap with your thumb because the screen is too small. Your thumb kind of just covers everything. Uh, but yeah, I don't think you could really <laughs> recreate Dragon Quest 1 without having to do that, though. This guy is really taking my time, isn't he? Die, Mad Knight. So I guess, yeah, there's whoever's got the Retro Achievement set, uh... I technically have missed two of them, which is give the princess to Draco Lord. I don't know what actually happens if you do that. I keep wandering down that route. Um, yeah, I, I legitimately don't know what happens if you carry the princess all the way here. It would mean having to go through this whole dungeon after fighting the, um, the big green dragon. And then, yeah, I'm not too sure if it would do anything. Also, I'm curious what happens when you, I think... You can't beat the game until you deliver the princess. So if you beat Draco Lord and you don't beat the princess... Uh, sorry, well, don't beat the princess. Um, if you don't save the princess, the king's just like, Yeah, 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 good job, you saved the day. But where's my, where's my daughter? <laughs> you have to get the daughter, and then he's like, You've done it, you've defeated Draco Lord and rescued my daughter. You've done it now. So... All the way here, uh, to the right, up. I will say, with this dungeon and, uh, maybe a couple of the other ones, like the, the last one as well, the, the guy's tomb, Garen's tomb. I'm gonna fall asleep, we're gonna just... Come on! Oh, don't do this to me, Ah, oh, Okay. I appreciate that I'll never be able to defeat these enemies because they're constantly putting me to sleep. Oh, there we go. There we go there. So this is what, floor four? Floor five. Thank you, very long dungeon, but eh. You know, you gotta have a long dungeon it eventually. And I guess, like, you know, as a legacy thing, it's like, after this game, this game inspired so many other kinds of games to just, like, be, like, this kind of easily approachable RPG. Because there's a lot of, like, real hard ones. I've never played Ultima, but I know that, like, Games like Ultima and, and Wizardry, uh, which definitely predate this, are fairly more involved. Um, games like Final Fantasy 1 end up kind of taking a nice... Final Fantasy 1 is actually not too much harder than this game. Like, it's along the same lines. And I actually am curious, like, how long Final Fantasy was in development, because they both kind of fit together quite neatly, you know? like. I guess this game is still published under the Enix name as well, like Enix was still 
its own thing. I guess nowadays, if you're new to the industry and you see Square Enix, there was some point in time in like the early 2000s when Square and Enix merged into one monolithic RPG studio. Um, and then they also published Tomb Raider. Uh, Square Enix had a lot of properties under their belt. Uh, too bad Eidos has been bought away from them. Poor Eidos, I swear. The big studios, I started this, like, topic, like, or the stream, like, talking about the, the Microsoft, uh, buying out Activision Blizzard, and now it's just like, yeah, there are so many studios. There are so many studios getting eaten up, so... If there's one trend, if there's one thing, we have like one, you know, we gotta find what's the trend of 2022 that's terrible. One, uh, games releasing in, uh, unfinished states. I will throw Elden Ring under that boat. Clearly Pokemon is a better example as well. Um, but Elden Ring definitely had very quirky behavior for a week and a bit. Uh, I'm super critical of it. It's like, you should not release a game if it's got that many widespread problems. What you should do is release demos, so people know that they can just play a demo. Release the demo ahead of time, let people play the demo, and then the demo is eternally your marketing device. But when you don't make a demo and you just expect people to buy the game, you know, this happens, and it's really annoying. Uh, but yeah, trend number two is uh, merging company mergers is kind of scary. I also was about to die, and I probably should watch my health. Don't take this away from me. I, I wanna- I wanna ruin the world! Oof. Uh, but yeah, I- I'm a little on the fence about all the companies buying each other. Because uh, it's just like, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, you know, it might lead to game publishers being more risque with their kinds of games. They go, yeah, like, we can release a game that's just purely for notoriety and not really for sales. Because it's like, we're a massive company, like, where else do you go? That's, that's perfect. But it's also like, yeah, you know, I would also like the risque games to do well. And I think some of that's on the market. Some of that's on the publishers for maybe putting a bit less, but still being able to deliver um, fairly good experiences. Because I think there is a diminishing returns with the amount of money you throw into a game. I think if a game costs a hundred million to make, I think you can make a game that costs one million to make, and it's not going to be that shabby. We've got Kickstarter games that do pretty all right on a million dollars. We just need really good direction. If one million is too hard, do do um do five million. Five million is a lot of money. So here he is. I got an encounter right on the space of of Draco Lord. That is, that is a good meme. That is good fun. So there we go. Oh, sick. I am the king. I have been waiting. I shall give you half the world. Well. Yes. Oh, most excellent. To seal our partnership, and we'll take your sword. Here you go. He's like, oh, so you'd already found this sword. But none of that matters now. I must give you a gift in return. To Bindo, I give half the world. The world of darkness. <laughs> oh, good morning. You were making a racket last night. You must have had a bad nightmare. Uh, and, uh, yeah, literally, uh, yeah, I guess I did, I don't, you don't give away the sword. But where am I? Oh, I'm literally outside the town. As in, I'm in the town that sells the magic keys. I'm just, I'm just here. That's interesting, that was something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to be like, oh, bad dream, you just gave in to evil. <laughs> sure, okay. But with that, that is pretty much the end of Dragon Quest 1. That's uh, virtually everything to see. Um, and uh, the only thing left is to really gain a lot of levels and then claim victory that you are now super duper leveled. But let's not show that on stream. So 
Until then, until next week, where the mystery game shows up, I would like to thank you so, 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 so very, very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this stream, you can follow on uh, Twitch, where I shall stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, the same time every week, uh, pretty much until Christmas comes around. Uh, and if you miss parts of the stream, or you want to watch just any stream, really, because they all end up on YouTube. Uh, so, yeah. And you can follow there as well, if you want the announcement that there's a new video. Um, yeah, I've also got my, um, my Pleroma at m.bndow.com, if you go there. That's all cool. Uh, I have a blog that I've not been posting to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, so... Anyway, yeah, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, you enjoyed this stream, uh, and uh, rug up because it's the festive season ahead of us. Mariah Carey is all already out of our, out of her tomb? Her frozen cell. She's back upon us, so. Alright, brace yourselves everyone, catch you next time. See ya.